I was born and lived in Puerto Rico until I was 11. This is a story told by the boy who gave me a horse just for one day, but that day has stayed with me for 70 years. The name of the little American boy walking toward me was David, the son of the man who owned La Casa Blanca, the only dry cleaning place in all of Puerto Rico. He crossed the street far down the block when he saw our horse, Carlo, walking behind me, his old cracked hooves clicking on the concrete of the new neighborhood street, each step counting the time when I would not see him again. Tomorrow, this brother of mine, whose big neck I had held and hugged when I needed something to hug, this carriage puller who carried fat maids with their heavy market baskets, would be gone forever. Father couldn't look at me last night when he told me he would have to sell Carlo so we could buy a new horse, one that would make the trip to the market and return quickly. He said some people pass him and Carlo and go to the next carriage in line at the market because they know how slow Carlo is. I knew he was right, but I wanted to tell him that Carlo is a brother from the days when we were a family, but it's hard to say things like that to a father. Now the little American was coming closer, and I could see how his eyes were filled as mine were when father first brought Carlo home. Nobody looked at Carlo like that now, so the look stopped me for a moment as if the boy saw Carlo the way he was before. He was almost my age, just a little younger, and when he stopped in front of me, I could see he wanted to touch Carlo, but was afraid to say anything. I reached for his hand, and when he gave it to me, I put it on Carlo's quivering neck and stroked it along his big forehead. The boy wanted to know if it was really my horse. I nodded, and he smiled while running his hand over Carlo's soft nose, and I knew then that the boy must have Carlo, and Carlo must have him, if only for one night, if only to share the dreams I once had, if only for the sake of having another brother who would carry with him, wherever he was, the memory of Carlo and what he meant to both of us. Fear jumped into the little American's face when I asked him if he wanted Carlo. He was afraid I was kidding and could not stand to be played with like this. I understood. No, I said I wasn't kidding and asked him again. This time he nodded quickly and I handed him the bridle rope and watched his eyes try to take all of Carlo into himself, trying but failing to own him all in one look. I watched him only for a few moments while he stood there with the bridle rope in his hand, Carlo towering over him, and then I walked away without turning back. The boy would walk, and after a moment of hesitation, Carlo would follow, perhaps looking back at me. I was sure the boy would look back with each step, moving down the new neighborhood street of big houses to the one on the corner, next to the empty lot where his mother would be waiting inside in the cool, dark, trying not to scold the maids. I remember in his front yard there was a large tree that spread over half the lawn. That would be where the boy would take him, tying the bridle rope to one of the low branches, thinking hard of a a new name, a right name, a name so powerful with magic that his mother and father would know right away that Carlo and their son could never be separated, a name that would seal their brotherhood, shielding their dreams from everyone. His mother would not believe he had a horse in the front yard, but he would pull her to the front of the house where she would stand gaping at Carlo standing on the manicured lawn under the tree. He would tell her Carlo was given to him by a boy down the street. Right away, the words to break him would be on her lips, but she would hold them there, waiting, perhaps making small tentative sounds to the boy whose eyes filled with every question while he waited, afraid, knowing he had not yet picked a name. Outside, the boy would touch Carlo again and again, learning how to speak to him, discovering the words, animals that size, with a heart like Carlo's 
answer to. Seeing the flies, the sores, the back slung low, the saliva dribbling from Carlo's mouth, the matted mane, the mud crusting his hooves, she would, she would cluck a warning every time her son got within a foot of the horse, afraid it would bite or kick or give him a strange disease, perhaps even more afraid he would get dirty in such a way that her husband, with his dry-cleaning plant, would never be able to get their small son clean again. I could see his father finally arrive, slowing the car at the curb, his face turned toward the yard, not at all sure there was a horse tied to the tree there. Slowly he would come out of the car, enter the gate, pause for a moment to make sure it, it was a horse. Inside, the father would kiss his son, and without asking, the boy's dreams would spill all over him in a rush of words that weren't sentences, just pieces of dreams that danced out of his eyes faster than he could tell about them. The father would listen, and when the boy stopped to catch his breath, he would go to his wife and speak to her in quiet whispers. The son would demand answers. We, we can keep him in the field, father, he would say pleading. In the meantime, I had walked home. Father had made dinner, and I would have to find the right time to tell him that I gave Carlo to the little American. If Mother had been alive, he would probably have gotten very angry, but a sadness that goes deep into him now makes him see things more slowly with a patience that is sometimes painful for me to watch. Later tonight, before dawn, I will have to come back to get Carlo, but for now, I am sure the boy is going to the field next to his house where he will fill an old bucket with grass, watch his horse's head fill the bucket, eating all the grass in a few seconds. At night, he would be sent to bed where his window looked out on the front yard. He would see his horse painted by the full moon covered in pale velvet shadows, and perhaps Carlo would raise his head to look at the boy, and looking at each other, the boy would see his dreams again in the mystery of Carlo's eyes. The little American would finally tire and lie back on his bed, dreaming of the first morning sun, seeing himself rush outside to greet his horse with his new name, the right name, that would keep him and the horse tied to each other forever.